thank you very much, Juji. Uh, and as the last presenter today, I would like to welcome Hasibul Hak Imon. As thank you very much, Juji. Uh, and as the last presenter today, I would like to welcome Hasibul Hak Imon, the program coordinator of the Liberation War Museum in Dhaka, Bangladesh. And he will uh, speak about the advancements in accessibility at the Liberation War Museum, uh, which is uh, devoted to the uh, 1971 independence war in uh, Bangladesh. So the audience is yours. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So myself, Hasibul Haq Imon from Bangladesh, and I'm representing Liberation War Museum. So my topic is advancing accessibility and uh, empowering individuals through the liberation or museum initiatives. So um, can you go to the next slide? Okay, all right. So uh, I'd like to start with the story of our liberation or museum. Most of the uh, museum here are actually representing the government, but these eight people uh, actually founded this liberation or museum through a trust. So Liberation Ore Museum uh, was established in 1996 by a trust named Mukti Juddho Sriti Trust, who is basically the commemoration for the Liberation War. And uh, founding trustees, those eight people, uh, they were basically the artist, cultural activist, researcher, art uh, con con concierge, and Mukti Jodhas, which actually basically the freedom fighters. Liberation War Museum went through a successful journey uh, of moving from a small piece of 6,000 square feet to a large structure in 2017. Uh, we'll be watching the museum uh, followed by, but I'd like to discuss about the galleries. We have four galleries. The galleries are basically, the gallery one represent uh, the history and the rich heritage of uh, syncretic culture of Bangla advent of colonial rule and uprising against uh, foreign domination, communal tension, and uh, so on. This is basically the history uh, part uh, handles with the gallery one. Gallery two, continue the struggle of existence. Basically, gallery two starts with the struggle of our liberation war. Gallery three is basically our battles, our friends, uh, this wars uh, define this gallery with the occurrences happened from May to November and uh, gradually, in uh, gallery four, um, uh, it uh, ends with the victory, which actually happened in 16 December 1971. So uh, our uh, victory, our values, and pr uh, the present and the naval operations and the armed conflicts, which actually uh, happened during the war, actually uh, presented in the gallery four. So. So uh, the emphasis of the Liberation or Museum is the ideology of 1971 and how the history can be driven to the youth of our country through this uh, construction of our constitution, which is socialism, secularism, nationalism, and democracy. And uh, in terms of today's topic, which is really important for this conference, this is advancing accessibility. So our key aspect of uh, 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 advancing accessibility is youth involvement, first of all, and technology advancement, remembering the history, uh, educational linkage, and inclusiveness. We have figured out uh, in the last few presentations that engaging youth to the museum and history is kind of very, uh, kind of difficult task. So we'll be gradually uh, discussing our activities and how we are actually empowering them through our uh, initiatives. So we have uh, some programs. Uh, this our youth program of outreach and reach, uh, reach out. We have a very fascinating cent center that is Center for the Study of Genocide and Justice. So uh, basically this center kept working to uh, 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 recognize our genocide, which actually happened in 25th of March, 1971. So this center is con uh, academically contributing throughout the globe uh, by empowering the individuals. And our, we have Liberation Dog Fest as well. Our young uh, volunteers uh, contributes to organize this Liberation Dog Fest. This is, whole, uh, this is about 
documentaries regarding human rights and other stuff and commemorating the histories. And we have other programs like uh, yearly Mukti Ruth Shop, the uh, Festival of uh, Freedom. Not like the Tyler Swift one, but we are trying. <laughs> so, okay, all right, so the, we have multiple partnerships uh, also with the uh, International Council of Museums as well. And it is a great privilege to work with you and it is also a great privilege uh, to talk in front of the people uh, you are here under the same roof sharing our minds. So these are our collaborations with this international organization which is International Coalition of Sites of Conscious, Asia Justice and Rights, uh, Global Alliance Against Mass Atro Atrocities, School Network, Library Network and uh, other org few organization. So uh, again, we'll have to talk about the programmatic focus for youth. So a uh, lot of traction we actually gathered throughout the Reach Out program. Um, uh, Rajiv Nath actually mentioned this mobile museum which actually exploring all over the India. We do ha have the similar programs, uh, like uh, we call it mobile museum and it is already uh, pass uh, uh, completed two times uh, 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 traveling the whole country. It is continuously working on it. So our outreach program is the one where the mobile museum goes out to schools in the various part of the country. And those students from the remote areas who doesn't have that much of accessibility, who actually gather this historical transition of liberation war and they get to know and they get to involve and we kept uh, incorporate them in our activities. So uh, uh, then, the cultural diversity, this is so important in terms of our Liberation War Museum. We call Liberation War Museum a cultural hub because there are multiple organization voluntarily chose our premises and we allow them to organize their programs. So, uh, uh, as you can see, uh, this is a photographs of uh, Promoting, promoting ethnic and religious diversity by Liberation or Museum. So the band is a very minor band of our country. They uh, promote the uh, marginalized community. So Liberation or Museum gave them spaces and they kept organizing their conferences, um, I'm sorry, my bigger pardon, their concerts and other cultural activities. So these are some uh, indigenous, indigenous people as well those are performing in our auditorium. And uh, this is, uh, I would like to mention this, this is about the International Mother Language Day, the 21st of February, which is the result of our struggles in 1952, which followed by the Liberation War in 1971. And 1971. So this is the transition. As you can see at the left, this is a colonialized building, just to us, to us to yet. And now at the right, this is our current liberation or museum. I'm sorry, yeah. So uh, if you have the files, we can have a little tour to the liberation or museum. Can we do that right now? Yeah. Do I have to play this from my end? I think we can do this later after the speech, uh, if there is an issue. I'm clicking on it. So uh, uh, for the clip, this is very much interesting because the transition of liberation or museum was kind of very challenging for us. The people, uh, people behind the transformation of the liberation or museum, who are the day laborer students who donated for the liberation or museum. So it's not a government organization, but we are, uh, yes, uh, uh, you are going to see the video, I guess. Things all right. All right.
Maya ahead of the time. I think we can do this later. I'll just continue. Okay. All right. Okay. So, uh, all right. So uh, you all are invited to our museum because we are having difficulties to like watch our clip. So uh, after uh, the clip, I wanted to like emphasize this topic that you can see this is a photograph. This is a this is an art from Shishi Dotto, an illustration. It shows the world is a village. And this is now you can see that we are actually under the same roof and sharing our minds. So the transformation of our museum can uh, connect to a lot of communities and uh, we can actually collaborate. Uh, okay. So we actually incorporated a virtual tour as well. Those who are not able to the museum, come to the museum, they can also go to our website. We have a virtual liberation or museum and you can explore uh, very much uh, lively. Uh, it, it will be a very much gaming experience and you can also use uh, VR to explore the virtual tour of our liberation or museum. So uh, I'd like to conclude with some of uh, the artists, that is the, the object of the, of the Liberation War Museum is to continue the effort of engaging the youth with education on ideologies of 1971 with as much as accessibility. I uh, uh, want to mention that uh, we have a large galleries and large premises. Those are easily accessible for the uh, people who, are, who needs this uh, accessibility and involving technology. We kept involving and incorporating technology to advancement for these uh, uh, experiences to be a very smooth uh, experiences for the viewers and audiences. So to retain the highest standards of archiving and exhibiting the exhibits of LDLVM, we have the archive and we kept working under research and technology and uh, kept involving uh, professionals, uh, scholars to gather more knowledges and we kept, kept hearing uh, the audiences who write comments uh, in the comments box and we regularly curate those things. So uh, finally, this is really important for us since we, don't ha we are not a government organization. We are uh, trying to uh, have uh, to create a robust endowment fund for the Liberation Art Museum because uh, it has to be an autonomous organization. You, can, you, you all know that political agenda is so, yeah, you know, like our history is so much incorporated with our po political stuff. So this is an autonomous organization and we want to make this for everyone like this to not changing any history for the future. So this is why we need the total authority to uh, continue with our museum, with our autonomousness. So we are working on it and hopefully we'll be collabor collaborating onto it as well. So these are my acknowledgement. I want to mention my honorable, uh, 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 one of my trustees, uh, Mohvidul Haq. He's a wonderful person and he, uh, and also Sarah Zakir, the current member secretary and Dr. Regina Begum, she is the manager of the research and library. And Shaoli Dash Gupto, he, she actually helped me through the abstract and other activities. And uh, uh, thank you so much. Joy Bangla, and Joy Bangla is basically our constitutional slogan. I hope Rina could relate with the word joy. Joy is victory. And let's keep in touch. And I hope if there is, in, if there is not issue, we can watch the video. No? Okay. All right, thank you so much for uh, your time. Thank you so much for your attention. It might be a glitch there, but this is a wonderful experience. Uh, thank you, Simu Set, for organizing such a wonderful conference. Thank you. Sure.
sounds in audio. All right. Thank you so much for watching this. Thank you, thank you so much. It is an honor and it is a great privilege to talk here. Thank you very much. Yeah, you may stay on the stage, and I would like to uh, the, the other two presenters to join us. Yeah, um, I have surely have some questions uh, regarding the three presentations, which were quite different. But as our moderating guideline said, it's not about me, the moderator. It's about the <laughs> the audience. So I would like to start with you and uh, uh, ask if you have any questions uh, to our guests. Oh, yeah, Diego. Oh, okay. Uh, I have a specific question uh, for, it's Yuji Kurihamara, right? Uh, yeah, as I perceive, you you show some museums that like in a modern building, but also some that looks like uh, part of cultural heritage of Japan. Uh, so how do your universal design cope uh, specifically with the buildings that are cultural heritage? Uh, I mean, how much you transform and sometimes uh, change the cultural heritage in some way that it may actually damage it to make it more accessible and somehow you need to uh, adjust your guidelines so you can uh, help to protect the heritage. Thank you. Thank you for good questions. Actually, my museum, Museum of uh, National Museum of Nature and Sciences, is built in about 100 years ago. <laughs> and also Kyoto National Museum is also built in built about 100 20 years ago, <laughs> so <laughs> they are so national uh, uh, important cultural properties. So it's strict. So by uh, agency for cultural affairs to uh, to move or uh, improve. So we have to discuss with the agency for cultural affairs. It is good. It is okay. So it is very difficult to reveal to our innovations. So we have to one or two hour, two years of discussion. And the uh, agency for culture affairs approves, so we can remove or <laughs> so. But uh, some uh, national museum art, Kyoto National Museum art, or uh, National Museum of Ethnology is newly museum, so it's very easy to <laughs> renovation or reconstructions. So it, it's, it's difficult to <laughs> our older museum, but the newly museum is are easy to renovation. But we have to innovate for uh, disability people, so we can inside the innovation. So outside is very difficult, but in, inside in room is very uh, easier to change. So and also soft uh, 
project, not the hardware, but software we can try to many project or many program for disabled people. So I will try it, okay? My question is for Hasipul. First, I want to congratulate you on your uh, very nice presentation today. Uh, Bangladesh uh, Liberation War is an uh, important chapter in the history of Bangladesh. I would say it is the most important chapter in the history of Bangladesh and creation of Bangladesh. Uh, and as of now, as I understand, uh, the youth constitutes about 30% of the population of Bangladesh. And uh, it is very important, I feel, that the youth of Bangladesh should know about the history, how this uh, nation was created. Uh, how do you uh, propose to uh, increase the accessibility of the youths of today and the coming days to your museum through your programs and activities? What kind of programs and activities are you going to have for them? Thank you, Rajiv, uh, for a wonderful question. And uh, I'd like to uh, share something about uh, the transition of uh, Bangladesh regarding, he, he mentioned the liberation of our. So in our gallery four, we had a section that our Indian friends actually helped throughout the events. So thank you so much for raising this question as well. So you have mentioned that 30% of our population right now are the youths, yeah, basically we are having a very uh, high number of uh, youths right now in the country. So uh, our ministry, Liberation War Affairs, actually they have their motto to engage as much as youths to connect more with the histories. So they get to know the history and the struggles of Bangladesh. They can get access to research and how we can uh, rec get recognition for the genocide which actually took place in 25th of March, 1971. So uh, the youth volunteers kept working and they're uh, working in different programs like uh, Liberation Dog Fest and uh, as a researcher, youth researcher in the Center for the Study of Genocide and Justice. We have also other research uh, activities as well. So the youths are very much connected to our programs. And also we do have this Freedom Festival from 9th December to 16th December, the victory day of our country. So this whole seven days, nine days, which starts from the International uh, uh, Human, uh, Human Rights Day, which is 9th December. So the whole programs actually designed and designed for uh, youth and they actually work directly. So. Uh, our whole, uh, most of the activities uh, engaged youth and we are kept doing it. So uh, we are, sign our signature program is the Liberation Dog Fest and uh, we also do collaborate with multiple organizations around the globe so to connect more youths from our Liberation Art Museum. Thank you so much, I hope uh, this uh, might answer your questions. Yeah, uh, I would like to ask, uh, yeah, you have talked about the young generation which is the majority of the Bangladesh uh, uh, people, but um, I think your museum has a chal quite challenging topic. And uh, do the victims of this genocide will find themselves in your museum, the the older people who suffered at that time? Uh, thank you, thank you, Frank. That's a wonderful question. I'd like to mention that uh, our uh, the war actually happened in 1971, so it's now 52 years. Yeah. So l there are a lot of injured freedom fighters who actually engaged to our liberation or museum. They also shared their thoughts that how we can design this. And in terms of the older generations, they also kept involved in our different activities, different research workshops, and we do organize programs. And since it's a very wide space, as you ha as we have seen, w this is very open for all. We call it 
uh, 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 museums for all. And uh, we call it People's Museum because this is not a government organization. So any kind of people, uh, older generation, youth generations are very much open to come here and explore their history. Thank you. Thank you. My question is also to uh, Hasibul Haq. <laughs> uh, oh dear. I'm trying to uh, straighten my face on this one. Uh, coming from a nation that is already within 30 years uh, in, uh, in a growing state of disillusion to a certain extent, about liberation struggles and their outcomes. And your museum is elaborating um, the liberation uh, from struggles from 70 years. How, does, how do you find a space within your narrative to actually frame that trajectory, that national mood change um, from the euphoria, from the, the bittersweet experiences of the liberation, post-liberation, and the arc of growth, development, or lack thereof, progress, or lack thereof, um, to where the country is now um, in, in terms of aligning that with the kind of dialogue, with the kind of contestations uh, that your general population, uh, young, middle and elderly must be having. Um, is there a space for those kind of conversations to happen or is, is that space shut down and it's being pushed somewhere to plan for the future, or is that uh, those challenging conversations being allowed to take place as part of managing the packaging of what your uh, museum offers? And I ask this because I know it's a difficult, it's a difficult circle to yeah. square, uh, but the reality is that this is the arc that countries go through, yes. All right, thank you so much, Elizabeth. So uh, this is very insightful thought as well, uh, which you have actually mentioned with your comment. So uh, our current uh, ruling government is basically in the power, their one of the resolution in their manifesto was to, uh, uh, was to like uh, put those war criminals in the trial. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, they are, I would say they're almost, almost close to successful, and uh, because they're the only, uh, they are the only government who are very much f fair to our his history. So uh, they do have their liabilities as well. So as you know, uh, this is uh, f for your in information. Uh, we are now 52nd years of age of our country. So uh, we will be graduating uh, at the development country officially in 2026, it was supposed to be in 2024 because of the uh, corona crisis, it actually uh, got delayed. So uh, your question is more about the policy making stuff and could we actually get to uh, have the access to talk about the policy makers, right? So the thing is, uh, uh, in terms of our history, in terms of the liberation or struggles, uh, the we are the last generation basically who are who have still the access to talk with the freedom fighters. So we kept uh, actually archiving our histories through oral history. Uh, I forgot to mention that we have 56,000 oral history, which actually uh, recorded uh, by the younger generations. Because of how, they did, how they actually did it, they heard stories uh, from their grandparents, their fathers, who are actually involved 
through the liberation work. So uh, in terms of our regular activities, and uh, we will be organizing an international conferences in 6th to 7th uh, December, uh, November for the uh, international genocide with the international genocide scholars. So we are doing it in, uh, with the coll collaboration of Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ministry of Liberation or Affairs. So we're very much close to the uh, 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 government of the Bangladesh, but uh, there might be a situation which might be, ch which might be challenging in the future uh, because you know this is the last generation who have those excesses and if they are not fair to the history, the struggles, there might be a situation as well. So yeah, this is how we are working on it. Thank you. <coughs> yeah, there's another question. Thank you. I have a question for Song Ji. Um, in your presentation, uh, your presentation was about uh, helping migrant children uh, uh, to come to museum and to uh, participate in education processes and so on. Uh, I'm interesting uh, from my point of view because 